of our Lord who accepts and appreciates the service of women. The scripture portion for today's meditation is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12, verse 1 to 8. The person we are going to deal with is Mary the Anointed. All the four Gospels recorded the account of Jesus being anointed by a woman with a costly oil. Matthew and Mark relate the same event but did not give the woman's name. Luke tells about different women and John identified her as Mary, sister of Martha and Lazarus. Matthew and Mark focused this as Jesus' teaching for his disciples. Luke shows that Jesus used this occasion to tell a parable about forgiveness. John recorded this Mary's anointing to proclaim Christ as Messiah and King. The pericope starts with the hint six days before Passover. It was a tradition that Passover lamb were chosen six days advance to inspect and ensure them that they were free from blemish, especially the legs, ankles and feet were easily get hurt by the rocky hillsides. So, anointing oil was rubbed into the feet and ankles and observed for five days. This is similar to Jesus' anointing at Bethany six days before with a pure knot in order to prepare for his crucifixion, death and burial. It is observed that Jesus, Mary and Martha and Lazarus and other disciples were present in the dinner. This can be considered as a kind of resurrection party given in honor of Jesus and to show their family's love and gratitude to Jesus. Martha and Mary hosted a dinner for Jesus at which his close circle were present implies that the sisters and Lazarus were also part of this inner circle of Jesus. With this as a background, the act of anointing of Mary could be divided into three parts. Firstly, it's a prophetic and priestly act of Mary. Secondly, it's a perfect and pleasing act of Mary. Thirdly, it's a preparing and proclaiming act of Mary. Firstly, a prophetic and priestly act of Mary. In the first century cultural context, people usually washed and anointed their own legs. Hosts would provide a basin and water for the guests to wash their feet before sharing the meal. The elites have slaves to wash the feet of their guests before sharing the meal. It is their custom that hosts should provide oil for the guests. The guests would rub it into their feet Talmudic proverb says a man should not invite his guest to anoint himself without oil if he knows that his jar is empty. The Jewish culture prohibits women to talk unbound hair in public. Unbinding hair in public is marked as a loose morals, but Mary dares to do this. Martha did what was socially ascribed by serving the meal. Mary chose to do something different. Rather than measuring a small amount of oil, Mary breaks the jar to pour out fully. She has been poured out generously without a thought for her future. This act of Mary encouraged the readers to broaden their understanding of this meal as not merely a celebration of Lazarus' life. This not only shows Mary's deep reverence and humility and a gesture of gratification, but also this anticipation of exaltation of Jesus on his crucifixion. Feminist scholar compares this deliberate act of coronation ceremony of Israel's king. Elizabeth Sushner Fiorenza, in her book In Memory of Her, writes, since the prophet in the Old Testament anointed the head of the king, same way the anointing of Jesus said must have been understood uh, as a prophetic recognition of Jesus, 
anointed the messiah the king in addition to that richard a horsley says when a woman anointed jesus she literally messiah in christ in him so the anointed plays a important role sometime it was a priest who anointed the king so this act would be not only a prophetic but also sacramental thus mary's act would be considered as a prophetic as well as priestly act jesus accepts this prophetic and priestly act of mary and rewarded her with a strong command to the church to remember her whenever his gospel is proclaimed as a body of christ how are we accepting and acknowledging the prophetic and priestly ministry of women secondly it's a perfect and pleasing act verses 4 and 5 talks about judas's immediate response to this act of mary but jesus rebuked him by saying why do you trouble the women for she has done a beautiful thing to me matthew 26:10 judas draws everyone's attention to show that this act of mary is an inappropriate use of money and a violation of torah because they had a rabbinic teaching that it is okay to use a perfume but it is not okay to use pure nard and also they were allowed to use only few droplets of perfume to add aroma to the celebration so according to judas this act of mary is a mere violation of torah they also had a strong feeling that women were incompetent to handle money jesus's response to this was significant judas is harshly rebuked with words leave her alone jesus not only confirmed that she does indeed have freedom to do so but also goes on to rebuke judas who would attempt to restrict her jesus publicly sides with mary than with judas whenever jesus spoke about his death the disciples did not understand it when jesus told peter that messiah must be rejected suffer and die then he will be raised peter responded to this with impassioned protest for that jesus rebuked him with the word get behind me satan in another instance when jesus spoke about his death the disciples responded by debating who will be the greatest in the coming kingdom and in another james and john missed the point entirely by responding to jesus's prediction with a request to sit at his right and left hand the disciples struggled to conceive of a kingdom that would begin not with the death of the enemy but with the death of their guru jesus this is the reason they complained about the waste of money exhibited by the anointing they imagined that the ministry with jesus would continue for more years to come but women who were ministering with jesus understood better than the men disciples that's why they stayed by jesus side after so many of the 12 betrayed him denied him and fled him in fear the women of bethany becomes the first of christ disciple to acknowledge his impending death this act of discipleship is perfect and pleasing to jesus so he accepts them and acknowledges them in his ministry the church being the body of christ how far are we understand and appreciate the sensible and innovative and faithful ministry of women in church and society thirdly it's a preparing and proclaiming act of mary john chapter 12 verse 6 7 and 8 gives jesus's interpretation about mary's anointment for this bishop leslie new begin in his book the light has come exposition of fourth gospel comments that mary's anointing the feet of jesus is an act of anointing the whole body for his burial mary's anointment proclaims jesus's enthronement as king on the cross in fulfillment of god's redemptive plan for humanity mary's symbolic act proclaims the violent events that is lie ahead she is not only preparing jesus symbolically for the suffering death and burial but also assures her comforting support 
to carry out this painful process. Some scholars opine that Jesus would have gone to the cross with this aromatic fragrance still on him. This aroma must have comforted him in his hours of deepest distress, reminding him of his loving devotion of one of his disciples. It was also a proclamation to all the soldiers and the bystanders as he moved up to Golgotha as anointed one of God. Some have interpreted that this spreading of aroma as a symbol of spread of gospel through the Gentile world. In connection with this, Jesus' final statement about the poor in this passage, the poor you have with you, but you do not always have me. For this, Bishop Newbegin argues that setting arms to the poor over against devotion to Jesus misses the actual motive of discipleship to the service to the poor. The devotion and gratitude for a sacrifice should lead us to service to the poor. The church, the body of Christ, needs to identify which is true devotion and which is true concern for the poor. The church needs to listen to the voices and sometimes to the silent and vibrant actions like this. Though it is not a cultural and traditional practice, Jesus accepted it. Likewise, the church needs to be accommodative to all who comes to her in order to bring God's reign amongst us. Prayer Gracious God, help us to accept, acknowledge and appreciate the silent, selfless sacrifice of women in ministry to bring changes in this world.